Welcome back to episode 6 of Ambition Strikes. In this episode, we camp in the coldest weather yet, ski some fresh powder at Winter Park, and start our solar panel install. I'm Courtney, and that's my husband, Ryan. Driven by a desire to learn new skills and challenge ourselves, we spent three months building our version of the Ultimate Expedition Vehicle. With the build coming to an end, it's time to hit the road and spend every second we can skiing, mountain biking, and sharing our passion for building things. So buckle up and follow along, because this is Ambition Strikes. So now that we have Wi-Fi in the truck, we are going to install a TV. We're going to stick it right up here on the wall. And uh, I know what you're thinking, like, come on, guys, really? You're going to watch TV in that awesome camper? But hey, we got to stay up to date on our YouTubers, and it's also going to double as an extra computer monitor. There we go. Got this cool wall mount. So right there, I'll be able to use it as a secondary computer monitor, or we can also pull it out to make it better for viewing in bed, or we can even kind of spin it around and sort of watch it through the door if we ever wanted to do that. I have no idea if we'll ever do that, but, but we can. On our way up this road, we were both like, uh, I don't know, it's like kind of a lot of snow. Are we gonna get stuck up there? Check out, we just rolled in. Toyota minivan. Today is Valentine's Day, so I'm treating Courtney to her favorite breakfast, uh, French toast with whipped cream. That kind of a cool scenic overlook up high over Fraser outside Winter Park. So we use the Instant Pot not only as a pressure cooker, but also as a way to saute stuff. It works really well to cook sausage and bacon, actually. Can I use it now? Yeah. You, you might need a fork and knife. Nope, going with four hands. <laughs> we're, we're camping. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow the lid to the whipped cream just bounced off the top of the fridge down this little crack and all the way in the back corner. And now the fridge won't close. <laughs> nope, I'm gonna get stuck. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> we decided we're gonna deal with that after our Valentine's breakfast. Oh. That was really that uneventful. That was really uneventful. <laughs> I have this piece of conduit from a project that I was gonna do that I never did. And it finally has a use. Victory and smashed. I'm on a secret mission to go get a certain delicacy. Stay tuned. Oh yeah. I think we'll do two boxes of Samoas and a box of Tagalongs. I think they're less expensive here than in California. All right, guys, I got the goods. <laughs> we both love peanut butter. So does, so does Boone. <laughs> so does Bailey. There is a moose in the road. A moose on the loose. Rotting towards us. <laughs> you see all that? Like steam coming out of its nose. It looks... <laughs> That's how Bailey feels about the moose. <laughs> We're like right outside town. I cannot believe there was just a moose in the road. I've never seen a moose before. Are you looking for the moose? This warm, beautiful, sunny afternoon. Just kidding, it's 10 degrees. And uh, I cannot get our step open, the latch is frozen. This is definitely gonna unfreeze it. I'm a little bit concerned about when it refreezes because now it's full of water again, but hey, 
one step at a time, right? Oh yeah. Look at that, our step is down. All right, well, here's home for tonight. It's a big empty parking lot. I'm really cold. <laughs> Can't feel my face. The sun's about to set. I think we're in for a cold night. I think the low tonight's supposed to be negative five in town and we're up here on this mountain top. So luckily we have a heater and uh, we're probably not gonna be cold in the camper. I swear that he did not do this on purpose, you guys. <laughs> Why is the instant pot in the bathroom? Okay, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's everywhere. At least it's in the bathroom, but like. We put the instant pot in the bathroom to vent it so that we can suck all the steam out of the vent, the vent fan and not steam up the camper. But <laughs> I don't. Does it explain why it shot food everywhere? I don't know everywhere. why it made a giant mess. What you doing, Court? Draining our shower. Cause it's negative five degrees outside. We both just showered and discovered that the shower pan was full of water. There's our drain probably froze, so we are <laughs> draining it the old-fashioned way. Not sure why the old-fashioned people did it this way. They didn't. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> One spoon <in> it. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are doing another upgrade on the road. We're installing 300 watts of solar on the roof of the truck. We're parked in front of our friend Alex and Jess's house. Huge shout out to them for allowing us to uh, take over their driveway for a few hours. Getting some stuff laid out and figured out. First concern was that these cords did not appear long enough for connecting three panels into one, but uh, just got it hooked up to make sure and it's kind of the perfect length. So. Uh, it's gonna work well. We're gonna bring all three panels into one and then from here go down to our charge controller. Installing equipment like this on the road presents a lot of challenges, um, but here's what I've come up with for mounting the panels. This is low profile Unistrat that I bought at Home Depot. It's only like 20 bucks a stick and then you can get these various connectors for it. And so we're gonna bolt these in like cross members on the roof rack and then we can bolt the solar panels to this. I like the Unistrat because it's galvanized, which means I don't have to paint it. The Unistrut comes with all these slotted holes in it that makes it really adjustable. So uh, basically gonna use these guys and because of the slotted holes, we have a lot of movement on where this can mount. I know you see use a lot of specialty tools in this channel, but if you're into metalworking, you can get a lot done with a four and a half inch angle grinder and a welder. Um, for a, years and years, this is like the only metalworking tools I had to build all sorts of stuff with. This grinder happens to be cordless. I actually prefer the uh, corded, um, you know, 110 ones, but uh, this one gets the job done too. So I'm drilling holes now to mount the crossbars and I'm gonna put them where we have these structures uh, to kind of hide the crossbars. So just attach them straight to our roof rack and- How many times did you measure? Um, this I only measured once. Woo! I'm telling you, building a camper is just gluing stuff together and then drilling holes in it. So there's a few reasons we're adding solar. It's something that we had always considered doing. It wasn't an issue the first part of our trip because we were doing pretty long drive days and we were able to top our batteries off. But once we hit Colorado, we really haven't been driving that far every day. Right now we have to drive six hours to fully charge our batteries, which we have not been doing. We've been doing maybe two hours a day and we were starting to run low with cooking three meals a day, running the heater um, and all of our other electrical draws. We've also been able to plug in our shore power at breweries and uh, campsite and uh, out front of a grocery store once, but it's not sustainable, not ideal. Uh, and hopefully the solar panels solve our issues. The shore power plug-in that I didn't think we were gonna use has actually turned out pretty sweet because it charges the batteries up fast. Plug your ears, kids. We only brought one set of earmuffs. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, we got it on the roof, so I think that was one of the hardest parts. We didn't die. I didn't drop solar panels on me. They're heavier than they look. <laughs> I think the Unistrut's the heavy part. Oh. <laughs> All right, panels are up on the roof and mounted. These are the Renogy 100 watt Eclipse panels. So these are the high performance, high efficiency panels from Renogy. They're a smaller form factor for being 100 watts and they do a better job of capturing the sun in low light conditions. They also come with this nice black frame that uh, some look a little more stealth up top here. Unfortunately, the wiring connectors that I ordered did not show up in time, so we're gonna have to finish the wiring on another day, but hard parts done, panels are on, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked with how this install turned out. Using the Unistrut was easy and uh, possible with very limited tools. So, just got some right angle connectors connecting the Unistrut to our roof rack. I offset the panels to the driver's side because our ladder's on the passenger side and this still allows me sort of a little walkway if I need to get up to the front of the camper. While I have this nice dry driveway, I'm also gonna install this little guy. It's a Wabasto part intended for keeping the fuel pump a little quieter on the diesel heater. No idea if it's gonna work or not, but it was pretty inexpensive and worth a shot because the, the tick, 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 especially in the low setting for the heater is getting a little annoying. Gwen says it's cold in here and he wants us to turn the heater back on. <laughs> All right, we got the silencer installed and we're gonna see if it quiets the fuel pump down. The silencer. Hit it. How many of you can turn your heater on from the dining table? <laughs> I think that just means your dining table is really small. <laughs> well, I can hear the fuel pump ticking, but I think it's quieter. Courtney says debatable, but I think it's quieter. I won't know until I try to go to sleep tonight, then I'll let you know. All right. We're having a blast on our trip, but can't help dreaming of the next big project. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and drop a comment below on what you think we should build next.